Hello and welcome to the Mindfulness Practice for Stress Reduction uh, as part of the Yukon Global at Home. Uh, my name is Sahil Lal and I work for the Office of Global Affairs and will be facilitating today's session led by Dr. Ching Wang. Ching Wang joined the NIAG School of Education for the spring 2020 semester from a Yukon partner university, East China Normal University in Shanghai. She teaches graduate theories of, of learning, cognition, and instruction undergraduate educational psychology for the Department of Educational Psychology. We're excited to have you join us today as our instructor, Dr. Ching Wang, introduces the concept of mindfulness, the basic attitudes of mindful pra mindfulness practice, and guides us through some fundamental forms of the practice. Hi everyone. For those who are just joining us, hi. And for those who are already here for a couple of minutes, hi again. Um, it's an honor. I'm really, really happy to be here today to host this kind of um, um, very nice community of mindfulness. I know it's a very challenging time, um, but a lot of people feel so stressful and anxious during this, this period of time. And particularly, it's close to the end of the semester. Students are struggling with the old assignments and exams. Um, so we thought it would be appropriate for us to host this mindfulness practice session for students to try to release their stress and trying to have get this gathering together to practice mindfulness together. Honestly, there are so many mindfulness relevant materials online and you can find um, all kinds of guided mindfulness meditation practice on YouTube, for example. Um, but still, I think this kind of a face to face gathering practice will enhance a sense of community and collaboration and showing that we still care for each other, that global affairs care about students so much. You know, I join a lot of uh, events with global affairs and I'm really, really touched by all these activities. Um, I, wish, I wish I could do my PhD again and join the <laughs> UCOM. Um, so um, our session today is about mindfulness well, basically, we have three uh, parts of this workshop because we we've, we've been waiting for people to join in. So it may last a slightly longer than uh, for 45 minutes. But if you are uh, in a hurry to do something, you are free to leave. But if you are willing to stay with us, um, please stay with us as well. So we have three sections. The first section is that I'm going to introduce the mindfulness concept and attitude very quickly. And second, part is that I'm going to guide you through some basic mindfulness breathing, body scan, and a rain technique for reducing stress and anxiety. So that's for the practice part. The second part of this session is that I'm going to invite you to think about how you're going to practice informal mindfulness activities and trying to integrate an, an attitude of mindfulness into your daily life. So that's like whatever you want to share with the, any idea, that's fine. And Sahil will share you with a template I just um, wrote yesterday. <laughs> Those like uh, suggesting some daily activities that we all do that perhaps you can integrate a piece of mindfulness attitude in towards it. So you can either talk about around these activities or share your own ideas and that's fine. So there are a lot of research around mindfulness nowadays and I'm just going to, through very quickly about what it is for those who are, haven't heard of heard about it. So mindfulness, the basic idea comes from Zen Buddhism, the philosophy, or it, but it's not religious at all nowadays. A lot of scholars and particularly Western scholars have been um, translated this idea into a very scientific base. So it's not a religious idea at all. Um, Underlying all the concepts of mindfulness, there are two main elements. One is the attention and awareness in everyone's present moment experience. So you have the moment here and now, your immediate moment, your living. It's paying your attention to your own body sensations, emotional reactions, mental images, mental talk, and conceptual uh, perceptual experiences like your sound, like your body sensations, like what you see, etc. So one is the attention to what you, whatever you experience at the moment. A second element is being open and accepting towards your experience, no matter what it is. Attending your experience with a curious, detached, and non-reactive orientation. So it's not a passive 
resignation to your current circumstances, but inviting, you actually inviting in, and embracing your experiences. So, so far, there are different kinds of mindfulness practice. Um, the first is the focus intention meditation. So you focus your attention on a particular object as an anchor. Okay, so for example, in a very basic form of mindfulness practice, our breath is the anchor. Second one is the open monitoring meditation. It will expand your awareness to encompass more and more from the field of your experiences. So we are going to practice that as well. The third kind of meditation is called ethical enhancement meditation. Um, we probably won't have time to get too much uh, today, um, but as a basic instruct, uh, in introduction, we can have some idea of it. It's in target relational capacities, such as uh, compassion, even compassion to yourself, self-compassion, empathy, and loving kindness. Okay, it's the shaping emotional and cognitive process that's especially benefit yourself and others. And there are some basic attitudes of mindfulness, and I think they are very useful in preparing us to practice mindfulness. So for example, having a beginner's mind, seeing the familiar things from a fresh perspective, non-judging, accepting your immediate experiences, trusting yourself and others, trusting your experience, no matter what it is, it's there and it's real. Non-striving and acceptance, okay, letting go, non-attachment, um, having a detached attitude from whatever you experience, and also be patient. There's no right or wrong way of practice mindfulness. Um, very often, a beginner of mindfulness practice um, practitioner will ask, um, "Have I do this right way or wrong way? Uh, what if my I feel my mind wandering a lot? Is the wrong way to do that?" And it's very natural phenomenon for our mind wandering because um, that's the nature of our cognitive activity. Our mind is always wandering, and from the perspective of mindfulness practice, it's the way to train our mind, to calm it down, to bring it back to the center of ourselves. So just regarded mindfulness practice as the tool to train your awareness and tension in a very flexible way. And there's no right or wrong way to do that. So, so far, um, many like widely used mindfulness practice are taken from two manuscripts. Oh, if we can say that one is the mindfulness based stre uh, stress reduction MBSR, and another one is mindfulness based cognitive therapy MBCT. So these two set very well established practice menu, or propose the following exercise. For example, the recent exercise is an example of mindful eating, body scan. Uh, we're going to do that today. City meditation combining with the meditate meditation, breathing meditation, uh, we're going to do that as well. Walking meditation, obviously you cannot do that because we're in, or in quarantine. Um, but I would su strongly suggest you do that when you have the chance to hiking or walking in the forest. So mindful stretching and movement, the three minute breathing space that coming from MBCT to help um, people who suffer from depression um, from the relapse, okay? And the last thing is the ethical enhancement meditation called loving kindness meditation. So that's the very brief kind of a, a lecture. <laughs> oh, that's boring. Uh, I can't wait to get into practice now. So that's all about the knowledge, basic knowledge of mindfulness. I'm going to stop sharing now. Um, is that okay for you? So any questions so far? Are we good? Okay, good. So shall we try a little bit basic mindfulness breathing? I'm going to play the music now. Uh, so let me know if the volume is okay for you. So basically I want to put this music as a background music that will not cover my instruction. Can you hear that? Yeah, see math, math, okay, cool. Yeah, perfect. Okay, that's good.
Okay, so you can just follow my instruction. So find a relaxed, comfortable position. Sit it on the chair or on the floor, on the cushion. Keep your back upright, but not too tight. Hands resting wherever they are comfortable. Tongue and the roof of your mouth, or wherever is found comfortable for you. And you can notice your body from the inside. Noticing the shape of your body, the weight, touch, and let yourself relax. And become curious about your body. Sit here. The sensations of your body, the touch, the connection with the floor, the chair. Relax any areas of tightness or tension. Just breathe. And soften your body. And now begin to turn into your breath in your body. Feeling the natural flow of breath. Don't need to do anything to your breath. Not long, not short, just natural. And notice where you feel your breath in your body. It might be in your abdomen. It might be in your chest or throat. Or in your nostrils. See if you can feel the sensations of breath. One breath at a time. When one breath ends, the next breath begins. Now, as you do this, you might notice that your mind may start to wander. You might start thinking about other things. If this happens, this is not a problem. It is very natural. Just notice that your mind has wandered. You can say thinking. Or wandering in your head softly, and then gently redirect your attention right back to the breathing. So we'll stay with this for some time in silence with the music. Just a short time, noticing our breath.
but from time to time, getting lost in our thoughts and the returning to our breath. See if you can really kind to yourself in the process. And once again, you can notice your body, your whole body seated here. Let yourself relax even more deeply. And then offer yourself some appreciation for doing this practice today. Whatever that means to you. Finding a sense of ease and well-being for you and this day. And if you're ready, you can slowly open your eyes and bring your awareness to this room. Okay, I'm sorry for this very blunt stop of the music. <laughs> I should use a bell. I used to have a bell in China. Uh, it makes very, very soothing and alarming sound. Um, yeah, so how do you feel? Feel a bit, a little bit turning into your body. Uh, we can have a little bit of chat um, if we have enough time. Yeah, calm. Okay, cool. Very relaxed, right? Okay. Um, so that's for my very ba basic mindful breathing, and we just talk about three minutes breathing space. I found it's a very useful and effective tool. Um, and it's very easy to use that in, on the daily basis whenever you feel stressed or you feel like uh, you need to have a little break between different um, learning tasks. You can try the three minutes breathing. Okay, um, let's try the three minutes breathings. So it's very interesting that we have three minutes structure of this specific form of mindfulness practice, also using the breath, your, your breath, breath as an anchor. So in the first minute, the focus is on we um, aware of our body's existence. The second minute is for gathering our awareness on our breath as the anchor. The third step, third minute is to expand our awareness to our whole body again and to feel the integration of our body existence with our uh, circumstances and environment. Okay, so we're going to get ready to practice that. Okay, so still find a seat where you're sitting. And you can close your eyes if you want. Okay, so close your eyes um, if that feels comfortable for you. Our first step is being aware, really aware of what is going on with you right now. Become aware of what is going through your mind. What thoughts are around. So here, as best you can, just noting the thoughts as mental events. So we note them. And then we note the feelings 
that around at the moment. In particular, turning towards any sense of discomfort or unpleasant feelings. Rather than try to push them away or shut them down, just acknowledge them. Perhaps say, "Oh, there you are. That's how it is right now." And similarly, with sensations in the body. Are there sensations of tension, of holding, or whatever? Aware of them, simply noting them. Okay, the feelings there, and that's how it is right now. So we've got a sense of what is going on right now. The second step is to collect our awareness by focusing on a single object, the movements of the breath. So now we really gather ourselves, focusing attention down there in the movements. Of the abdomen, the rise and fall of the breath. Spend a minute or so to focus on the movement of the abdominal wall. Moment by moment, breath. By breath, so that you know when the breath is moving in, and you know when the breath is moving out. Using the anchor of the breath to really be present. So we stay with our breath for a while. Now, as a third step, having gathered ourselves to some extent, we allow our awareness to expand, as well as being aware of your breath. We also include a sense of the body as a whole. Gathers more spacious awareness. A sense of the body as a whole, including any tightness or sensations related to holding in the shoulders, neck, back, or face, as if your whole body is breathing. As if our whole body is dissolving, we feel the more spacious awareness. And then, when you are ready. Just allow yourself to open your eyes. Okay, guys. So that's pretty much about a taste session of three minutes breathing space.
But while you can see it's quite, it can be quite flexible. You can, if you want, you can lengthen just three minutes into five minutes or seven or eight minutes. But if you want a, a even shorter term, because you have, have very busy schedule, you can shorten it into one or two minutes. So the basic step is that first you begin to aware of yourself and then to narrow this awareness and concentrate on your breath. And then the last step is to expand your awareness to the whole body and feel your, your kind of dissolving, integrating into your environment. That that's the principle of the three minutes, three steps. Okay. Right. So I know it goes um, quickly, like quickly than the usual mindfulness practice that I, I did quite a lot of a workshop of mindful practice, but it's, this one is pro probably the quickest one. <laughs> it seems to against the mindfulness attitude, but uh, well, it's that I, it's just in this session, I want to introduce um, as many as useful and effective basic uh, exercise for you so that you can practice that at home. So the third activity, uh, which is my favorite, perhaps, is the body scan. This one, and has any of you heard about body scan? No, not Matthew, but Sahil, do you, do you hear, have you heard that? No? Okay. Um, so, Genchi, have you heard of body scan? Not really. Um, okay. Maybe, huh? but I... Because I don't really know like the Chinese translation of it, but um, is it is it is it is it like um um it lets you to like feel like you're like from your head to your toe like yeah. every part of it yeah yeah similar to that yeah okay cool right so you heard of it so yeah, body scan right, right. yeah body scan is an exercise that you concentrate on a certain part of your body. It's like a scanning machine that you bring your awareness to go through your body for each part of your body. And you can go from head to toe and from toe to head from any part of your body and just feel that it's the scanning machine go through your body. So it can be very flexible and it clinically it is uh, proved to be very useful treating uh, insomnia. So many people have um, practiced that just before going to bed. It's helpful for them to feel so relaxed and they fall to sleep naturally. Okay, so let's try that. Usually I do that for 30 minutes and most of my participants just fall asleep. And I can even hear the snoring after five minutes. Um, but today we're doing a much shorter version because we have only limited uh, time. Is that okay? Yeah. So this is a relatively longer session, it can take about 10 minutes. So if you're sitting and if you feel that your back cannot hold your, uh, your weight for the uh, whole period of time, you can use a cushion to support your back, okay? Right. So you can sit in your comfortable position and close your eyes. So this is a guided body scan meditation. So as you do the meditation, you may feel like you are drifting off to sleep and it's fine. If you notice thoughts such as worries, or concerns arising that takes your attention away from the meditation, it is also normal. Okay, just see if you can redirect your attention back to the body scan. So we'll be noticing our body sitting on the chair, feeling the body sensations that are present
will be noticing these sensations without trying to change them or make them different. Simply bringing that mindful attention of curiosity and openness to the present moment. Can begin the meditation by noticing. The sensations at the top of our head.、So、simply bring your attention to the top of your head and notice what you feel. You might notice some vibration or pressure, and then allow your attention to notice your skull. There might be a sense of pressure, weight. You might notice some other sensation. Simply be curious. Feel them. Sometimes when you encounter a sensation, there might be some tension. Allow it to gently relax. Notice what it is that you feel. Notice your face area, your forehead, your eyebrow, your eyes. Your nose. Let your attention gently brush your ears, your cheeks, and mouth. There might be sensations of tingling, temperature, tightness. Let it all be there. Then begin to notice the sensations in your throat and neck. Become aware of anything that's present for you. In your shoulder area. If at any point you notice tension arising, sometimes in the act of noticing it, you may find yourself releasing the tension and relaxing. If it feels extremely tense, you can breathe gently. Directing that breathing into that area to allow yourself to soften. At this moment, you are aware of the sensations in your left shoulder. Bring your attention there, and then let your attention go down. Your left arm, noticing any vibration, tingling, heat, coolness, pressure, movement. As you reach your elbow, your lower arm, and then your hand. Notice your hands and fingers. Be curious. And open to the sensations that are present. Also, allowing your hands to soften and relax.
while you're breathing, bring your attention up to your right shoulder. Again, noticing any sensations that might be there, and then start to go down your right arm, feeling vibration, tingling, movement. Noticing your right elbow, forearm, and then your hand and fingers. Now let your attention go back to the top of your shoulders. To your back. Notice the shoulder area soften. Breathe. Begin to bring your attention down your back. You can zigzag it across your back, or make an up and down movement in your mind, like someone touching your back very gently. Sometimes there's strong sensation in our back. Sometimes there's not so much sensation at all. Just be open and curious to whatever the experience is. Kind to ourselves, no matter what. And notice your upper back. Your mid back and lower back. If any thoughts going on to your mind, see if you can let them go. Let them be like clouds floating in the sky. Moving across your mind, you don't have to take them personally. Just let them go. Now bring your attention to the top of your chest area. Gently scan your chest. Down to the upper rib cage, into the stomach area. See if you can soften your stomach. Breathe more deeply and breathe out slowly, directing some breath. Into that area, allow it to soften and relax. Bring our attention a little bit down to our abdomen. Notice your pelvis, the place where your body connects with your chair. Feeling whatever sensations are present. And now, gently bring your attention to your left hip. We'll start to bring our awareness down our leg, noticing the sensations in our left thigh. You can circle your attention gently around the leg. Bring your kind and curious attention to your leg, and then to your knee. 
and left calf, noticing whatever is present: vibration, tingling, or heat. Let it be there, whatever it is. Noticing your ankle, the foot, and toes. Become aware of whatever is there for you. Now, bring our attention back up to our right hip. And then down to our right thigh, feeling whatever is present. You can circle your attention around the leg, or notice it in any other way that makes sense to you. Feel the vibration. Tingling, heat, happiness, and down to your knee. Your calf. And then down to your right ankle, foot, and toes. So now that you've scanned your body, you can start again from your head to toe while listening to this music. Or you can go up. Through body to get to the top of your head. Let your awareness freely to scan your body up and down. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. Okay, that's it for the body scan. And how do you feel? I see people escaping. <laughs> <laughs> so that's pretty much about a、uh, body scan, and I can see that we are re almost reaching. <laughs> yeah, for sleep, I know how it feels. <laughs> so we're reaching the end of the workshop almost, and we still have rain practice.、Um, we probably don't have much time to practice rain from the very beginning, but I can share with the main idea with you basically, so that you can try to practice yourself. Let me share this screen for you. So, as you can see, the rain is a condiment for four principles in this practice. The R stands for recognize what is happening. So, usually, when you have a very strong feeling, especially a negative feeling, it's very useful to practice rain. To first recognize what is happening, what is your feeling is, and try to label it, but not judging it. Okay, so labeling the feeling is the way for you to understand what it is, but no judging there. Okay, so A stands for allowing this experience to be there, just as it is. 
So it's like embracing and accepting what it is, what it is, feeling is there. I stands for investigate with interest and care. Again, no judging. And N stands for nurturing with mm -hmm. self-compassion and non-identification. Okay, so it's like realizing freedom from your narrow identity. You are not the event. You are not the feeling. Although you feel maybe awful at the moment, but let the feeling be there. We don't need to do particularly any strong reaction to that feeling or even judge that feeling. Just let it be there and have this curious, caring attitude to investigate it. Yes, let's try that because I thought rain is is helpful, especially when we are in a stressful time. Okay, yeah, let's try that. So sit quietly, close your eyes, and take a few full breaths. Bring into mind a current situation in which you feel stuck. Or anger, fear, anxiety, or boredom. It may be conflict with a family member, a problem with your research, a conversation that you now regret, or feeling of stress in exam or work. Take some moments to enter the experience, visualizing the scene or situation. Remembering the words spoken, sensing the most distressing moments. As you reflect on the situation, ask yourself, what is happening inside me right now? What sensations am I most aware of? Is my mind filled with thoughts? What are they? What is going on inside me? Take a moment to become aware of whatever is predominant, or the over-emotional tone of the situation. Our second step is to allow life to be just as it is. Send a message to your heart to let be this entire experience. Finding yourself the willingness to pause and accept that is in this moment. You can experiment with mentally whispering words like, yes, I consent, or just let it be. You might find yourself saying yes to a huge inner no, to a body and mind painfully contracted in resistance. You might be saying yes to the part of you that is saying, I hate this. And that's a natural part of the process. At this point in rain, you're simply noticing what is true and intending not to judge, push away, or control anything you find. 
breathe slowly. Do not try to fix or change anything. I don't judge myself for feeling anxious or guilty or shame or stressful. Let the feelings just be there. The third step is to investigate with gentle, curious attention. So bring an interested and kind attention to your experience. Where are the feelings strongest in my body? What emotions does this bring up? How does this part want me to be with it? Feel free to experiment with these questions. Many students initially see investigate as an invitation to fire up their cognitive skills. Analyzing situation or themselves, identifying the many possible roots of their suffering. Well, mental exploration may enhance our understanding, opening to our embodied experience is the gateway to healing and freedom. Our last step is to nurture with a loving presence. Simply ask yourself, "What do I need in this moment?" As you sense what is needed, what is your natural response? Calling on the most wise and compassionate part of yourself. You might offer yourself a loving message, or send a tender embrace in word. You may gently place your hand on your heart. You may imagine someone you trust—a parent or a pet, a teacher or a spiritual figure—holding you with love. Feel free to experiment with ways of befriending your inner life, whether through words or touch, images or energy. Discover what allows you to feel nurturing. What best allows the part of you that is most vulnerable to feel loved? Seen, heard. Offering care inwardly, and letting it be received. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. Okay, that's pretty much about rain. So you can see that's four steps to investigate a strong negative feeling and trying to embrace that feeling. So our purpose not to control or change that feeling, but you can feel that、um, the negative feeling, the tension of that will dissolve or be、uh, decreased after you adopt this accepting attitude towards it. So I personally found this really helpful,、uh, especially you have an argument with somebody that you love, or you are facing a very intensive job interview, or facing an exam, something like that. So yeah. So how how would one fill this out? Is a is there a specific way to fill it out? Uh, 
No, not really. This is just a very simple template. So basically, we have a different kind of a, a chunk of the time. You can categorize as morning, noon, afternoon, evening, or morning, noon, evening, whatever you want. And I'll basically list something, some daily activities you actually you have to do every day, basically. But doing it mindfully may be helpful. You don't have to do all the things mindfully. I know it's very difficult. Uh, particularly for beginners, being mindful there kind of uh, spend you, you need to spend much energy to stay mindfulness mindful, but you can choose one or two activities and try to do it mindfully. Just concentrate, bring your awareness on that specific activity while you, you're doing it, and perhaps uh, reflect and note down how do you feel differently if you do it mindfully. Compare it with what you usually do without mindfulness. How do you feel differently? So I just list some examples of activities there. So feel free if you have more ideas, if you want to try something out differently. And I, I personally would like to uh, do that like three minute breathing space when I feel tired and I realize that I feel tired of working. I can practice that either in the morning or in the afternoon while you work, uh, when you work. And use the body scan during your nap before going to sleep is very helpful as well. But again, it's a template. It's flexible. So it really depends on your own schedule. Choosing um, very small activities and try it out differently to see what happens. OK. That sounds good. And when you when you say practicing um, these different tasks mindfully, uh, how how exactly um, do you would you describe practicing one of these tasks mindfully? For example, um, you know, brushing your teeth or picking mm -hmm. up your outfits um, or even replying to emails. What mm -hmm. what is the difference when practicing one of those tasks mindfully? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I probably shouldn't use the word practice. It's not like formal mindfulness practice. It's informal. It's basically about bring your attention and awareness on whatever you're doing at the moment. So if you are, for example, now we are in a workshop, when I'm talking with you guys, if I'm not mindful, I will be worrying about my time, my dinner, I will think about what I'm going to cook for dinner, what I'm going to do later. I'm going to worry about, oh, why all the audience are gone, things like that. So it's not mindful. So if I do it mindfully, I will concentrate on this communication with you guys. And that feels completely different. Okay. Um, so if we take some activities from this list, for example, eat lunch mindfully. Okay. So mindful eating is a way of formal practice. But if we do it informally, trying to integrate mindfulness attitude to uh, everyday life, that we chew and we appreciate food mindfully, just concentrate on eating, not talking to other people, not chatting emails while you're eating or not watching movies while eating, just eat, just appreciate the food in your mouth. And, and that's, that's it. That's an informal practice, what we're saying. Yeah, well, thank you so much for helping us with this session for hosting this session um we really appreciate it i know it brought me some inner peace during this this, this time um and hopefully it did for all of our participants as well thank you tnk for sticking around for the entire session we really appreciate it um and thank you to everyone else who had you know participated um throughout the session uh, you know, we're really hoping to continue on with UConn Global at Home, you know, as an mm -hmm. office, we really want to be there for the international community, but also mm -hmm. the nation as a whole. Yeah. Um, so we really appreciate mm -hmm. everyone's participation during this time.